Uh, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the Subcommittee on Commerce, Trade, and Consumer Protection. Um, <clears throat> The subcommittee will come to order. Without objection, the subcommittee will proceed pursuant to Committee Rule 4E, so ordered. The chair recognizes himself for an opening statement. Uh, is the speaker loud enough? Can you hear it? Do you want to just see? Testing one, two, three, four. Testing, testing, testing. Testing, testing. Okay, I think we've got it. We'll start again here. The subcommittee will come to order. Without objection, the subcommittee will proceed pursuant to Committee Rule 4E, so ordered. The chair recognizes himself for an opening statement. Good afternoon and welcome to the Subcommittee on Commerce, Trade, and Consumer Protection hearing on travel and tourism in America today. I want to thank sincerely the witnesses for appearing before the committee. I know how busy you are. This is our first hearing on this subject in the 108th Congress, but I'm confident uh, this will not be our last. Beginning with our hearing, uh, less than a month after the horrific, terrible events of September 11, 2001, myself and our staff uh, have been examining the state of the U.S. travel and tours industry as it continues to recover from the downturn in travel since September 11th. During this recovery period, the industry has faced other challenges, such as the war in Iraq and most recently the SARS epidemic. I noted the U.S. News and World Report on the cover of their issues that says SARS hits home, how it spreads, where it came from, and how to fight it. This type of publicity is not good for the tourist industry. <clears throat> so at a time when the industry faces serious challenges, most not of its own doing, we are holding this hearing first to highlight the significance of the industry to our economy so Americans understand. Second, I hope that the hearing creates a good record as to what are the problems in the industry today and what, of course, specifically needs to be done to cure these ills. I hope to learn what we as federal policymakers can do to make the United States a travel destination of choice for international travelers. Now permit me to cite some sobering facts that clearly underline why this industry is very significant and is such worthy of careful consideration by federal policymakers like ourselves. The travel and tourism industry employs, both directly and indirectly, nearly one in every seven Americans, some 18 million people. It generates over $5 billion in economic activity every year. Travel and tourism is one of the top three industries in 29 states, including my home state of Florida. In fact, the more in fact, the more than 40 million visitors a year to Florida generate about $40 billion, the single largest source of income for my state. Making the United States a travel destination of choice for international tourists is extremely important. One fact illustrates the significance of international travel best. In the United States, an inter international visitor spends four times as much as a domestic traveler. That is one reason we have a balance of trade surplus in trade, in travel and tourism. While the, travel, while the trade deficit of the United States has steadily risen to where it is in 2002, the imbalance reached an all-time high of $435 billion. The travel and tourist industry has consistent, consistently been the largest sectorial contributor to our balance of trade surpluses in services. Yet our balance of trade surplus for travel and tourism indeed has fallen from the high of $26 billion in 1996 to $8.6 billion in the year 2001. 
still representing 12.5 percent of the total services surplus. The fact that the industry generates a balance of trade surplus, yet we see a 70 percent decline in that surplus in a period of just five years is a very telling story, underscoring the need for the serious attention, I believe, of members of Congress. The bottom line is that international visitors are a key to the health of the industry and indeed our balance of trade. The United States is now the third most visited travel destination in the world behind France and Spain. There is no reason, my colleagues, why it cannot be the first. Just this session of Congress, we appropriated $50 million to the Department of Commerce for a comprehensive international destination marketing campaign. In my view, this is an important first step. If those funds are used effectively with an input from industry through the legislatively mandated United States Travel and Tourism Promotion Advisory Board, I think that Congress should make the one-time appropriations an annual one. Spain, just for example, in 1997 spent three times as much, $150 million, promoting itself as an international travel destination. As the Spanish economy is less than 5 percent of our economy, I think if well spent, $50 million is a small sum to pay for touting the natural beauty cultural richness of our country to these international travelers. And finally, my colleagues, I think we need greater coordination, at least at the federal level, with respect to the development and execution of a national tourism policy. Therefore, I have written to the Commerce Secretary Evans in support of the creation of a Presidential Advisory Council on Travel and Tourism. The Council would be comprised of experts from the private, public, and nonprofit sectors and would serve in an advisory capacity to the Secretary and the President on national tourism policy and development. The Council's key role, in my view, should be fostering a cohesive tourism policy at the federal level. The experience of my own state of Florida in developing cohesive tourism promotional policies has been most instructive. So I want to thank the witnesses again and look forward to their testimony. And with that, uh, I recognize uh, you, Mr. Walker, uh, distinguished I think, uh, ranking uh, member. To all the folks who testified, it would probably be appropriate for them to know that uh, Chairman Alan Greenspan has testified in the Financial Services uh, uh, Committee today talking about the economy. He perhaps should have been listening to you this afternoon. He would have had an even better and clearer picture of where the status is of this important industry. Um, <clears throat> I think what I hear from all of you that this uh, letter that I've written to uh, Secretary Evans asking for a Presidential Advisory Committee Council on Travel and Tourism, and you certainly agree, uh, particularly in light of the fact that the United States was a number one tourist attraction and now follows behind Spain and uh, um, France. I, I think when, when I try to hear some of this bad news, obviously, that you folks are talking about, what is the one thing as a legislator we, my colleagues and I, could do? And going back to my opening statement, this international tourist provides so much more than the commercial. We want to spur on the uh, tourism in America uh, for people to go within the United States, but we would like to attract a lot of the international uh, tourists because that provides much more bigger impact for the buck. And so the idea of this $50 million being made permanent as part of the budget to help advertise the United States, uh, and as I pointed out, uh, Spain is spending $150 million, and they have 5 percent of our GDP. So certainly the United States uh, certainly could spend uh, $50 million uh, to see how effective it would be. But uh, Mr. Walker's talked about this perfect storm, the 9-11, uh, the economy being weak even before that, uh, the terrorist threat that continues, a war with Iraq, uh, homeland security, and all the bothers that a lot of people perceive uh, going to the airport. Uh, Mr. May knows from his uh, the number of airlines, uh, both uh, for, for transportation as well as uh, commercial, uh, includes all the major airlines, American West, American Airlines, Delta, U.S. Air, Emory, Freight, uh, even uh, I guess you have some associate members with, uh, from Canada, Mexico, uh, Royal De Dutch Airline. So um, 
the, the, the problem with the airports and the waiting in line contributes uh, the idea of homeland security and then last, of course, to have SARS coming up. This has almost created the perfect storm. So now what can we as legislators and what can you as uh, uh, industry leaders do? And I would say the concentration should be on that international tourism um, and bring the people here to say, one, uh, it's not going to be a hassle in the airport because we're going to have iris scans. We're going to have fingerprints. We're going to have anything to expedite. So the Homeland Security should expedite the whole process of getting people through the airlines quickly. Uh, and we have the technology to do it. Um, uh, two, we've got to uh, provide uh, safety to the international travelers that to come here that there's not a threat from SARS, there's not a threat from the tourists in, uh, from the terrorist attack. Uh, and that all can be gotten out through this uh, $50 million that we do through the Presidential Advisory Council on Travel and Tourism. Um, so there's lots of things we could do, I think, um, to attract more international tourists. Um, our immigration uh, policy has perhaps dampened a little bit of people coming in here because it's a little bit of a hassle and all the extra interrogation and things that go with it. So this international tourism, it seems to me, is the indispensable action or condition that perhaps would jumpstart this more quickly than anything else. So my question to you is, you're a policymaker. What one thing, and I'll just go from my right to the left, what one thing would you do if you could advise the advisory council or you had the power and you were president? Because, frankly, what we do in this travel and tourism industry affects the economy dramatically. And the fact that we had a $26 billion surplus when we had almost a $450 billion deficit in trade, to see this when we were the number one and see now this surplus uh, go down to $8.6 billion in the year 2001, um, it's so positive, it's so clean, it's so powerful an input that I think the president should realize that with not a lot of work, we can jumpstart this and the international travel. So I guess I'm asking uh, for each of you to give the one thing you as president think could be doing to help your industry. <clears throat> Well, from the standpoint of the U.S. Chamber, uh, Mr. Chairman, not to diminish the importance of the uh, $50 million appropriations to the Department of Commerce and the importance of that. No, I need your candid, you know, whatever, whatever subject or whatever way you think. The, the, the number one uh, item that I perhaps would focus on is given the disparity of the travel and tourism industry as a whole, it covers, as you can see, just from the representation at this table, such a broad diversity of sectors within the travel and tourism industry. I think the establishment of the Presidential Advisory Council is key to bringing together all of the various agencies that have some piece and some impact uh, on travel and tourism and bring it together under one uh, entity uh, to vet issues, to vet policy, and then to, uh, to be able to go forward and, and implement that policy on a, on a unif in a unified way from the standpoint of uh, the administration. Mr. May. Mr. Chairman, I think uh, that certainly within the context of, of this overall economy, we have to do whatever we can to strengthen the economy because that's going to add a lot to travel and therefore uh, the domino effect that people have been talking about. I think we have to also, as a part of that, help people understand it's never been safer to fly, that our security measures are better today than they ever have been. We have to increase and take measures to increase consumer confidence. And finally, uh, I would suggest, uh, if I can be permitted a parochial moment, that we need to promote international travel on U.S. flag carriers. Thank you, gentlemen. Mr. Edwards. Thank you. Uh, briefly, I would suggest, obviously, the economy needs a jump start. Uh, there's no question that that has to be moved on on a unilateral basis, legislative and private sector. Number two, uh, I would have to endorse uh, a team approach. I don't mean to sound like the, the, you know, the NBA here, but a team approach, legislative, private sector, everyone. This Presidential Advisory Council on Travels and Tourism is established. It is there. It is functional. It is a universal entity. And I think your $50 million and, and other expenditures maybe in the future towards image making to bring the people to this country is, is, is would be a primary step. And using this as your vehicle would eliminate a lot of the ambiguities of all the different pieces that are moving parts and moving targets. I think this would be the entity to use. I would pursue it very strongly 
and make sure you have the top CEOs that are involved in the industry as part of your right and left hand as advisors here to give direction. Mr. Robinson? Yes, thank you. I think uh, I'd like to comment on this $50 million. We appreciate that that expenditure has been allocated. Uh, it's terribly important, I believe, since this is an experimental phase this first year, that it's used wisely and that we focus carefully on what it might be used for. And I agree entirely with you on the proposal to focus on international travel. However, historically, it's been, uh, been very interesting because the majority of uh, visitors that come to this country that really return uh, spend larger dollars come from certain countries, and they're Great Britain, Mexico, Canada, and Japan. And, and I think it's important if we can focus on a few countries and not try to you know, cover the world, so to speak, that, that it will be a lot more effective in what uh, we're able to bring to fruition. Thank That's you. That's a good idea to focus down on where they Right. The, the, the experience-wise has shown us to be where the best uh, source of money. Yep. That's correct. Mr. Sternberg? Well, Mr. Chairman, as I always tell my managers, action is always better than inaction. So now that we've appropriated this $50 million, let's do something with it. And I think the first step in that is, is establishing the Presidential Advisory Council so that the money can be well spent and used wisely. But uh, having appropriated it is the first step, using it is the second. Well, Mr. Chairman, I don't think I can help much on the $50 million because I think most of that, if not all of it, is going to be spent overseas. And that money uh, will, at best, indirectly uh, assist the travel agency sector of the economy. But I do think that, uh, to go back to the point I made at the end of my earlier testimony, it is most important here that we not do unto ourselves that which we're trying to stop coming from other places. Uh, and I don't think we have established an appropriate mechanism yet for fully evaluating all the consequences of all the things that are proposed to be done about security and, and other related issues. Security will always be first, no one's suggesting otherwise. But I think the government, whether it's at the presidential level or in our view probably closer to the ground, it should be at the Department of Homeland Security. Uh, this industry has got to work in a unified way with the government uh, to take account of the consequences of some of these actions that the government takes. And as a passing thought, I would also say to my colleagues here on, at this table and anyone else who, who might listen in the future, this industry is divided because of internal conflicts within it. And as long as we remain divided and not talking to each other about these things, having government places to go and talk is not going to solve the problem. We have to get over the fractionalization and fragmentation within our own house in order to truly solve these problems. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, we certainly support the, the uh, appropriation of, of funds for, uh, uh, in turn, promoting the United States as a destination of choice. I think uh, there's no question that increased international travel will help to catalyze the recovery, uh, as, as would some of the other uh, restorations of tax deductions that we talked about. However, there is a crisis that besets, uh, that befalls uh, the, the workers in this industry in particular, and, and, and the crisis that uh, the travel and tourism sector is experiencing has been recognized by this subcommittee. I, I think I would reiterate that most importantly, we need to figure out some way to have uh, at least a short-term uh, measure for continuing health care benefits for the workers in this industry. Um, the COBRA system is an existing, simple, efficient, and well-defined private sector mechanism for both corporate and union pension funds that agree to continue coverage. Um, there could be um, a, uh, a, an opportunity here for uh, federal uh, coverage of that, uh, those COBRA payments without any new entitlements or bureaucracy, uh, and uh, after a 12-month period, uh, it would simply cease. And so I would, I would uh, ask the subcommittee consider this. I think in my time, obviously, it expired. The right. And I think that's one of the things that has come out of this hearing. But I just want to ask Mr. Edwards one question. I note he has 30 years of experience. Uh, with economic climate in the uh, hotel uh, travel industry. And um, have you ever seen anything this bad, or is this you've seen worse before? 
I have, uh, let's put it this way, I had the same question from the president of my company. I said, I never realized my job description between snipers, anthrax, wars, I mean, I can go through the whole litany, has yeah. ever been this way? And the answer, in all honesty, is no. Um, my father was with Hilton in Chicago for his entire life. You have recessions. I don't want to Osama bin Ladenize the economy. That was the final blow, but the economy needs to kickstart. I personally have not seen a spiral of this nature, in all honesty, and a difficulty in managing the ambiguities. If, you, if it's coming from the left, you're getting hit from the right. I mean, it's, it's kind of perpetual. And, and um, I just uh, I would answer your question. That's a long answer to say no. I have not personally experienced I, I think that's what I sense. And um, uh, Mr. Walker mentioned a perfect storm here. And so I think uh, my colleagues should be very keenly aware how important this industry is and anything we can do to help, we'll do it. I think this hearing is another step forward, so I want to thank all of you. I know how valuable your time is and I want to thank my participation from my colleagues and uh, thanks again for coming and the committee's adjourned.